Welcome to chapter seven. Chapter seven is going to be a very important chapter. Um, it's about membranes and the direction that water is going to flow and that type of thing. And if you're going into nursing, there's going to be a lot of questions that you're going to be asked about this type of thing. So definitely make sure you understand this very, very well. So the membrane is going to be surrounding the cell and it's going to be composed of that phospholipid bilayer that we talked about briefly before. So here is a picture of that phospholipid bilayer. Now, um, the phospholipid molecule is an interesting one. It's called an amphipathic molecule, and that's because it has a section that's polar and a little section that's nonpolar. So you can see the polar part is going to be um, these little gray circles that you see here, and the nonpolar part is going to be all the, the yellow that you see here. And so that's why they orient themselves in this way, because the inside of the cell down here is going to be mostly water, and outside of the cell is also going to be mostly water. So the polar or hydrophilic part of those molecules is going to want to face the water, and the hydrophobic parts are going to want to be as far away from the water as possible. So that's why they set up in that way um, to form the phospholipid bilayer. Okay. Um, so the bilayer is going to be stable, and that's because the water is always going to be continuously um, repelling those nonpolar parts of it. And so if we think about um, this question here, which type of molecule would pass through the phospholipid bilayer more easily? Let's look here. So if we think about um, polar versus nonpolar, if it's got to get from here all the way across to here, what type of molecule would have an easier time getting across? Hopefully you're thinking that a nonpolar molecule would be able to get across more easily. That's because it might be a little tough right here, but once it gets here, it's smooth sailing because polar and or nonpolar and nonpolar like each other, and then it can get shot out over here. Um, if you had something that was polar, it could get to here, but it's not going to get all the way through that nonpolar stuff. So the answer to that would be a nonpolar molecule would get through the phospholipid bilayer more easily. Okay. Um, so what we're going to talk about is um, the way that the membrane is going to work and what it co its components are. And so when you see pictures of the cell membrane, it's going to look like this. This is called the fluid mosaic model. And the reason it's called that is because the phospholipid bilayer is fluid. It's always kind of moving. And if you look at it from the top, it does kind of look like a mosaic. So there, there's your description there. Um, now, the way that these things are going to move around in the membrane, they can move laterally, which would just be kind of moving from side to side, you know, switching places with one in the same layer, a lot. Look at how often, 10 to the seventh times per second. That's all the time. They can also do this flip-flopping thing, but that is not really that common. That maybe happens once per month. And so um, that's going to be just like a flip-flop usually due to polarity issues or something like that. Um, so those are the ways that they can move around in the membrane. Now, you're going to also have saturated and unsaturated phospholipids. So you can see the unsaturated ones, remember they have that little kink that we talked about before, and you can see that unsaturated phospholipids are going to cause a lot more space to be between them, and so you can have more of a fluid membrane. So like, you know, um, your, you know, membranes of like your inner cheek or something like that, those cells, those are going to be a little bit more fluid. And then if you have all saturated phospholipids, then they can pack really closely together and be more of a um, sturdy cell membrane. Maybe that's like in your bone cells or something like that. So those are going to be the two ways that you can have the different um, setups with saturated versus unsaturated. And obviously there's a lot in between with that. Okay, now... Um, in your cell membranes, you're also going to have cholesterols. And in this picture, that's going to be those little hexa hexagonal shapes that you see there. Now, cholesterols are going to have an effect on membrane fluidity. One thing that they're going to do is they're going to allow a cell membrane to become um, a little bit more fluid by creating the spaces between the phospholipids. But 
cholesterol is going to actually be kind of sticky, and so it's not going to allow them to become too fluid and totally kind of fall apart. So cholesterol is a really important part of the membrane because it kind of keeps everything in check, which is, is important. Now, does that mean that um, you should go home and eat like 50 donuts because they have a lot of cholesterol in them and that's good for your cell membranes? Uh, not so much. Uh, I wish. I really wish. Okay, now you're also going to have membrane proteins that are going to be in the phospholipid bilayer. And um, there's a couple of types. There's going to be these transmembrane proteins, and they're going to go from one end of the um, membrane to another. Um, and let's see if we have a picture here. That's going to be a transmembrane protein, right? It's going from one side all the way through to the other. Okay. So membrane proteins are going to have a lot of different um, categories and jobs and things that they're going to do. Um, one of them are going to be that they are um, cell surface markers. And you're going to have two types of proteins. You're going to have free floating and then you're going to have anchored proteins. Um, and I think, yeah. So um, you've got free floating ones which can kind of, you know, bob around anywhere in this um, cell membrane and then you're going to have these anchored ones that are going to be connected to these peripheral proteins that are going to kind of be connected to the cytoskeleton so they're not really moving anywhere. So those are the two types as far as that goes. Now they can do a lot of different functions. So this is a list of all of them but it's probably easier if we just see this picture that kind of describes them all. Okay, so they can be used for transport. So um, they are going to be kind of like a little tunnel in the um, phospholipid bilayer. And so if you want something to get through from one side to the other, um, they have to pass through these proteins sometimes. And so we're going to talk about that in a little bit. So that's one thing they can be used for. Another one is that enzymes are actually composed of proteins, and so you can have membrane proteins that are going to do enzymatic activity, where maybe something needs to be converted into something else, and so they are going to be right there to do that. Um, another one is that they can actually transmit signals. So something can attach to the protein on the outside, it never actually has to come in, and it can send a chemical signal to the inside of the cell to trigger some sort of response. For example, let's say that you ate a bunch of sugar and now it's time to make insulin. So the signal comes, hey, Fleur ate a bunch of sugar, and then that signal's going to come through to the inside of the cell that says, okay, let's get those um, processes going to make some insulin. All right. Cell-to-cell -cell recognition. So this is going to be important when you have two different types of cells, or two of the same type of cell, I should say, and um, they, they want to recognize each other, right? So I'm a blood cell, you're a blood cell, or I'm a bone cell, you're a bone cell, that type of thing. And that goes along with this next part about intercellular joining. Well, I'm a bone cell and you're a bone cell and we're trying to form bone, let's link up together. And so you can use membrane proteins to do that too. Um, and then the last thing is that you can use these membrane proteins to attach to the inside that cytoskeleton and then also attach to the outside for that um, extracellular matrix. All right. So those are all of the different pro um, protein functions that you can see here. Now, as far as their structure goes, I was talking about how you've got integral and peripheral proteins. Um, so here you can see the difference. So integral proteins are the ones that are going from one side to the other. Peripheral proteins are all along the inside of that membrane of the cell. They're along the periphery, right? Um, so that's how you can remember them. Now, integral proteins, the one that go from one side to the other, can either be what are called single-pass anchors, which are just kind of there to hold everything together, or multi-pass channels, which are going to be like those tubes that we talked about that things can travel into and out of the cell with. And then the peripheral proteins are going to um, connect the membrane to the cytoskeleton and also help with signaling. Now in the next section, we're going to talk about how things can move across the cell membrane, and this is that really important section that nurses always say that are on their exams and that type of stuff.